Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between the Privacy Threshold Analysis, PTA, the Privacy Impact Assessment, PIA, and the Systems of Records and Notice. But before we do that, a free way to support the channel is by subscribing to help the channel grow. Also, do remember to like and hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new video. All right, let's get rolling. Relationship between PTA, PIA, and SON. Privacy Threshold Analysis. PTA is a questionnaire or document that is used to determine if an information system contains personally identifiable information or the PII. It is also used to determine whether a privacy impact assessment, that is the PIA or the system of records and notice are required. The purpose of a PTA is to one, identify systems that have privacy implication. Two, validate that privacy was considered during the, the review of the information system. Provide compliance and privacy laws and regulation. PTA is first conducted in accordance with OMB guidance, and if required, PIA is conducted prior to implementing the appropriate control. Now let's look at what is personally identifiable information. P PII is defined as any information that can be used to distinguish or trace the identity of an individual either alone or when combined with other personal or identifying information as per OMB memo M-07-16. So some of the examples of what is considered PII are name or subject name, subject social security number, subject address, subject date of birth, subject place of birth, driver's license numbers, biometric information, email addresses, and so on. All of this information are considered personally identifiable information. This information can be used to identify a person. All right, so now let's look at what is privacy impact assessment. Privacy impact assessment, PIA, are required by section 208 of the e-government act of all federal government agency. A PIA is an assessment of how information is collected, maintained, stored, and disseminated. PIA must be made publicly available unless the publication will raise security concern, reveal classified information, that is national security, or reveal sensitive information, example, potentially damaging to a national interest, law enforcement effort, or competitive business interest. PIA must notify the public when Personally identifiable information, PII, is being collected. Why the PII is being collected. It must notify the public how the PII will be collected, used, accessed, shared, safeguarded, or stored. It must also contain plan developed for breach notification to subject, type of remedial services, such as credit monitoring, that could be provided to affected individual. Now, let's look at what the system of record and notice is. A system of record notice, SON, is a formal notice to the public published in the Federal Register that provides a description of a particular system of records. A system of record is an agency record keeping system which contains information that can be retrieved by the name of the individual or by some other personal uniquely identifiable information. So, Pretty much what this is saying is that if there is the unique identifier that can be used to retrieve any information in a database or a system of record, then that information system requires a system of record notice to be registered with the Federal Register. Don't have the following purposes. Number one is to identify the purpose of a system of records. To identify which individuals are covered by information in a system of records. To identify the categories of records that are maintained about the individuals. To identify how information is shared by the agency. To inform the public of the existence of the system of records. Lastly, is to provide notice to the public of their rights and procedure under the Privacy Act for accessing and correcting information maintained by the agency on an individual. Now let's look at the special publication that talks about the PTA, the PIA, and the system of records and notice. Special publication 800 
a guide to protecting the confidentiality of personally identifiable information. So now let's look at the executive summary on page seven of this document. It says, the escalation of security breaches involving personally identifiable information, PII, has contributed to the loss of millions of records over the past few years. Breaches involving PII are hazardous to both individuals and organizations. Individuals' harms may include identity theft, embarrassment, and blackmail. Organizational harms may include a loss of public trust, legal liability, or remediation costs. This document provides guidelines for a risk-based approach to protecting the confidentiality of PII. Each organization may be subject to a different combination of laws, regulation, and other mandate relating to protecting PII. So an organization's legal counsel or privacy officer should be consulted to determine the current obligation for PII protection. The Office of Management and Budget, OMB, has issued several memoranda with requirement of how federal agencies must handle and protect PII. To effectively protect PII, organizations should implement the following recommendation. The first recommendation is organizations should identify all PII residing in their environment. An organization cannot properly protect PII it does not know about. PII is any information about an individual maintained by an agency, including number one, any information that can be used to distinguish or trace an individual's identity, such as the name, social security number, date and place of birth, mother's maiden name or biometric record. And two, any other information that is linked or linkable to an individual, such as medical, educational, financial and employment information. All of these are considered what PII. All right, so now let's look at how we go about doing the, uh, the PTA. So the very first thing we have to do for our system to determine if our system is a privacy sensitive system is to conduct a, what, a PTA. That's the very first thing we do. And what is the PTA? PTA is just a series of what questionnaire or questions that you answer. And if this answers are uh, answered correctly, or if it is determined to be a positive, meaning if it contains a PII, of subjects or people that you're dealing with, therefore the system will need to conduct a PIA. So the first thing we do is we look for a template for PTA, or if your agency has a template for a PTA, you use that template to conduct your PTA and answer all of these questions. Determine if your system is a privacy sensitive system. So a simple Google search of a template for PTA will reveal a lot of template that we can use. All right, and now we can see that we have what DHS privacy threshold analysis. All right, so this is the template that you can download to use for your privacy threshold analysis if your agency does not have a template already. But if your agency do have a template, you have to go with your agency template. This is the document that we're going to use, but I have already downloaded it and converted it into a Word document. So let's let me pull out the Word document. This is the Word document. So you see, you can actually answer some of these questions and then you fill out your system, your system information, the project or the project name, the component, the office and program, the TF is my name, the type of project or program, and then uh, the project or the program manager. You have the information system security officer, whoever is the ISO. If you are the ISO, your name goes in here. Uh, routing information. You know, and then you go down and then you start answering the question. So this is the very first step in uh, privacy determination. So now we see, please describe the purpose of uh, the project or the program. You write that in there. The project or the program status, last uh, date last updated. For whom does the project or the program collect, maintain, use or disseminate information? If it is DHS employee, contractors working on behalf of DHS, members of the public this program does not collect any information so you can modify it to your organization's specification you know whatever organization you work for you can modify it or whatever agency you work for you can modify it as well all right and if the members of the public contractors you select 
what specific information about individual could be collected or generated or retained? You answer that question. Keep going down. Does the project or the program use social security number? Yes or no? If yes, please provide the legal authority to collect that social security number. If yes, please describe the use of the social security number within the project or the program. So does the system employ any of the following technology, closed circuit uh, television, does the CCTV, the SharePoint as a service, social media, and what have you. Does this project or program connect or receive or share PII with any other DHS system? In this case, whatever your organization is, you can write it in there. Yes or no. Does this project or program connect, receive, or share PII with any external uh, non-DHS partner? Again, you can modify your agency. This external sharing pursuant to new or existing information sharing access agreement, memorandum of understanding, memorandum of agreement, letter of intent, and so on and so forth. So you answer all of this question. When you are done, you submit it to the privacy official of your agency. They review it and if they deem that the system is taking enough PII to be considered a privacy sensitive information system, then you'll be ordered or you'll be required to conduct a PIA. So the very first step is to do the privacy threshold analysis. Once you conduct the privacy threshold analysis, and if your system is positive, meaning it contains a lot of PII of the subjects you're dealing with, then you will have to do a PIA, that is a privacy impact assessment. So now moving on on page eight of this document, it says organizations should minimize the use, collection and retention of PII to what is strictly necessary to accomplish their business purpose and mission. The likelihood of harm caused by breach involving PII is greatly reduced if an organization minimizes the amount of PII it uses, collects and stores. Organizations should categorize their PII by the PII confidentiality impact level. That is to say, all PII is not created equal. PII should be evaluated to determine its PII confidentiality impact level, which is different from the Federal Information Processing Standard FIPS Publication 199 confidentiality impact level, so that appropriate safeguards can be applied to the PII. Each organization should decide which factors it will use for determining impact level and then create and implement the appropriate policy, procedure, and controls. The following factors are examples of factors to consider. Identifiable organizations should evaluate how easily PII can be used to identify specific individuals. For example, a social security number uniquely and directly identifies an individual, whereas a telephone number area code identifies a set of people, right? So the quantity of PII. Organizations should consider how many individuals can be identified from the PII. Breaches of 25 records and 25 million records may have different impact, of course, right? So the data field sensitivity. Organizations should evaluate the sensitivity of each individual PII data field. For example, an individual's social security number or financial account number is generally more sensitive than uh, an individual's phone number or zip code. And in the context of use, organizations should evaluate the context of use, the purpose of which the PII is collected, stored, used, processed, disclosed, or disseminated. Obligation to protect confidentiality. An organization that is subject to any obligation to protect PII should consider such obligation when determining the PII confidentiality impact level. Obligations to protect generally include laws, regulation, and other mandates. And then we have access to and location of PII. Organizations may choose to take into consideration the nature of authorized access to and the location of PII. When PII is accessed more often or by more people and system, or the PII is regularly transmitted or transported offsite, then there are more opportunities to compromise the confidentiality of the PII. And then moving on, we have organizations should apply the appropriate safeguard for PII based on the PII confidentiality level. That is creating policy and procedure around the PII, conducting training for people that use or work with the PII, 
the identifying the PII, or you can, if, if you can use some maxing to kind of max the PII so that it reduce the, uh, uh, the identifying nature of the PII, that will greatly uh, uh, reduce the risk. Using access enforcement, implementing access control for mobile devices, and then we also have providing transmission confidentiality, auditing events. Organization can monitor events that affect the confidentiality of PII, such as what inappropriate access to PII. Organizations should develop an incident response plan to handle breaches involving PII. And then we have, lastly, it says organizations should encourage close coordination among their chief privacy officers, senior agency official for privacy, chief information officers, chief information security officers, and legal counsel when addressing issues relating to PII. Moving on on page 14. Organizations should use a variety of methods to identify PII. Privacy threshold analysis, just like we saw, also referred to as initial privacy assessment or the IPAs are often used to identify PII within an information systems. PTAs are used to determine if a system contains PII, whether a privacy impact assessment, that is the PIA, is required or whether a system of record notice, the SON, is required. And if any other privacy requirement apply to the information system. So you see, just like we saw, PTA is the first step of your analysis. You do the privacy threshold analysis and see or to determine if your system has a lot of PII or collects PIIs of the subject that you deal with. And in that case, then you need to do a, what a full-blown privacy impact assessment. And further by saying PTAs are comprised of what simple questionnaire that are completed by the system owner in collaboration with data owner. So just like we saw, you answer some few questions about the system in regards to the data that it processed in regards to the PII. And like I said, if it is positive, meaning it contains a lot of PII of the individual, then therefore your system is considered what privacy sensitive system so now moving on on page 27 of this document conducting privacy impact assessment pia are structured processes for identifying and mitigating privacy risk including risks to confidentiality within an information system according to omb pias are structured reviews of how information is handled that is number one to ensure handling conforms to applicable legal, regulatory, and policy requirement. Two, to determine the risk and effect of collecting, maintaining, and disseminating information in, in identifiable form in an electronic information system. And three, to identify and evaluate protections and alternative processes for handling information to mitigate potential risk or potential privacy risk. So in a nutshell, the PIA is an in-depth assessment of how best you can handle or protect the confidentiality of the PIIs of the subject you are collecting. Controls such as the administrative controls and technical controls and all other controls should be implemented to safeguard the, the, the privacy or the PII information that you are collecting. Many organizations have established their own templates that provide the basis for conducting a PIA. The following are some topics that are commonly addressed through the use of a PIA. So these are some of some few suggestions when you are doing or conducting a privacy impact assessment. Say what information is to be collected, why the information is being collected, the intended use of the information, who are you sharing this information with? How the information will be secured? And what choices the agency made regarding an IT system or collection of information as a result of what performing the PIA? All right, so now moving on to locate a sample PII template that we can use if we have the need to produce any PIA within our organization or agency. You can do a simple Google search of that sample PIA then there you see you have privacy impact assessment template and again this is also from 
DHS, Department of what? Homeland Security, and this is in PDF. So I've already downloaded this and I've converted that into what a Word document. So now let's navigate to the Word document. All right, so this is the Word document of the, the document that we just Google right now. Privacy Impact Assessment for, you can add what the name of the system. Whatever system you're dealing with, you can add it there. The DHS component, uh, in this case, you can change the agency to your agency add the uh, publication date, you know, contact information, reviewing official, uh, official, you know, you can update this information uh, and this header can be updated. You can take out this logo, you can delete it if you want. Going down, so see the abstract, we have the overview we have the overview the overview creates the foundation of the entire pia the overview provides the context and the background necessary to understand the project purpose and mission and the justification for operating a privacy sensitive project all right so moving on again we can edit this headers take away all of this edit all this information to uh, to suit your your needs privacy act system of record notice so on apply to the information so if your agency already have a what system of record and notice you can use that system of record and notice. that is what agency wide but if not you can use the specific system of record notice for the specifics or the particular system you're working with has a system security plan been completed for the information system you answer that if you have it uh, hopefully you do we have, does the record retention schedule approved by the National Archive and Record Administration exist? You answer most of this question and then this will be what a complete privacy impact assessment of the system. Does the project use information from commercial source or publicly available data? You answer that. Discuss how accuracy of the data is ensured. You know, privacy impact analysis related to characterization of the information. You have user information, describe how and why the project uses this information. So in a nutshell, this privacy impact as, uh, assessment will ask you a series of questions and then you have to answer the question based on your information about the system and the particular uh, data or information that the system processes. This is a template. You can use this, delete everything that does not apply to you and then modify it into your own uh, organization or system specific privacy impact assessment. And finally, you can do a quick search of what SON or the System of Record Notice Federal Register. We have the Privacy Act notices and registries, right? The Privacy Act of 1974 governs the collection, man maintenance, use, and dissemination of personally identifiable information about individuals and system of records, SON maintained by the federal agencies. A system of record is an agency record keeping system which contains information that can be retrieved by the name of the individual or by some other personal identifier. The Privacy Act requires that agency gives the public notice of the system of records by publication in the federal register and this is the federal register. So you see various system of records that has been that are being published here all right so you see uh we have a lot of our uh, system of record that are that are that were published on this register we we have uh, the privacy act of 1974 system of record by defense department this was published this month all right and then we have what privacy act of 1974 system of record federal communication commission published yesterday so let's look at what this is so you see you have the agency, we have the action, we have the summary of the publication, the addresses, we have the for further information, contact, supplemental information, and then the system name and number. So this is the system name, security classification on classify, system location, system managers, um, we have record source categories. We have all of this information about that particular system that they are being recorded in the federal registry. You can actually navigate through this website and see various system of records that have been published by the federal agencies. So uh, to conclude this video, let's look at some of our security controls to 
provide safeguards for this PII we're talking about. So it says the items listed below are some of the NIST special publication 853 controls that can be used to help safeguard the confidentiality of PII. We have some of the controls as what well, access enforcement, AC3, separation of duty, AC5, list privilege, AC6, remote access, AC17. We have uh, user base, collaboration and information sharing. We have access control for mobile devices, auditable events. Uh, we have media access, MP2, media markings, MP3. We have media storage, media transportation. We have information system monitoring. All of these controls are, what, in are, are used in addition to the privacy controls to make sure the PII of the system or the information system is well protected. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you find this video useful, do like, share, and subscribe. If you have not yet already subscribed, please do comment below and let me know your thoughts on this video, and I will see you in the next one.